and conspired all of them together to come and to fight against Jerusalem and to hinder it. Nevertheless, we made our prayer unto our God and set a watch against them day and night because of them. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this morning. Thank you for uh, a chance, uh, opportunity to continue studying uh, uh, this book of Nehemiah. I pray, Lord, that you continue teaching us through the principles that we uh, have learned so far and that will be uh, uh, maybe reinforced uh, this preaching. I pray, Lord, that you help me as I preach. Uh, remind me of the things that you have uh, taught me as I was uh, uh, um, uh, going through this uh, passage. I pray, Lord, that you help even those who are listening to have um, uh, uh, attentive uh, ears, dear Lord, and a humble heart uh, to be humble enough to be uh, uh, receptive as well to the preaching of your word. And I pray that we will be able to glorify your name. May you be the one to be lifted up in this time of uh, Bible study. For these things I pray in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Um, please bear with me this morning because uh, I did something dif uh, a little different with my notes and I may not still be used to it. But uh, today we're going to be at uh, verse 7, 8, and 9. But before that, let us just uh, go back a bit to verse number 6. Now, last, last uh, time, last, was that last week or two weeks ago, we learned that um, Nehemiah uh, prayed to the Lord, but it was a little bit different prayer from the previous prayers that we have uh, seen him uh, do from the previous chapters. His prayer was a bit, uh, in our time, if you may say, maybe uh, uh, vengeful or uh, violent. But he was venting all of this to the correct person, to the Lord. He was not going to the face of the enemies and saying that, uh, I hope that your iniquities will not be taken away from you and you die. No, he's praying to the Lord. Lord, do to them as you see fit. Now, whatever you will do to them, I'll be able, I will accept that. Because at, actually they're not uh, uh, directing what they're doing towards me. Actually, all of this is towards you and towards your work. So that is your job to avenge us. So... Uh, Nehemiah gave it all to the Lord and after giving it all to the Lord what he did what they did was they continued working he he uh, encouraged the people to keep on working and all of them continued working because verse 6 says they had a mind to work now they they were not distracted at the enemy at all if, if anything they only they only stopped for a bit and prayed at least Nehemiah did and after that God used him to encourage the people to keep on working and the answer of the Lord to their prayer was not directed to the enemy. Because most of the time, we, when we pray to the Lord, we ask God to do work on the people that we have conflict with. right? But, but God most of the time answers the other way around. He does work in us instead of those people. So God answered them by giving them a mind to work. So that they will not really uh, uh, go down and, and, and stop working and face these troublemakers. Instead of doing that, they kept on working. Now, sometimes the best way to avoid being distracted by the enemy's plan is to keep on being busy for the Lord. That is maybe, um, that is maybe one of our good defenses. Instead of, so that we will not be doing what the enemy wants us to do, we should make ourselves busy in the work of the Lord. And, and they, uh, they did this because God gave them a mind to work. In their mind, during this time, it's the work that they're doing is more important than the things being said to them. More important than the things that are being thrown at them. Because the priority is to build a wall. And that's what we're going to do. But no matter what they do, no matter what they say, whatever they say about us, we are going to continue to work. Because without this wall, if we don't do this as our priority, there will never be stability in this city. There will never be stability in that place. So we have to finish building this. Now, we can take care of them, but we have to do this first. Now, we see here, it's a wonderful sight seeing the people of God having one mind to work on what God has called them to do. I think I, uh, yesterday it was uh, uh, touched upon during the preaching. Uh, uh, behold how good and pleasant it is uh, 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 for brethren to, uh, to dwell together in unity. It's a wonderful thing to see. Now, if you are someone on the outside looking in, you see members of the church having one mind to work and working all towards the same goal, it's a blessing. It's an encouragement. Now, uh, last night as I was uh, 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 reading back on my notes uh, for pre preparing, I thought that uh, when was the last time I saw this church really 
have this one mind to work towards a goal. If, if you can just look at recent memory or maybe a long time ago, when was the last time that really everybody had just, just uh, the Lord made it clear what His plan was, what the program was, what we are supposed to do, and everybody just had that, okay, I'll do this for that, I'll do it for everyone, just had the mind to work, just went, uh, go, go, uh, uh, got to working towards that plan. Now, I was thinking, and uh, by the grace of God, I, 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 I thought of some times that, uh, that we did that. Of course, generally, we're doing that. But during those times when we started, uh, uh, when we decided to start holding youth camps, uh, when Cedric was still a teeny, tiny boy back then, uh, everyone was. But even though we were young and we were few back then, whenever uh, our pastor said, okay, we'll be holding youth camp this month, everyone just got to working towards that goal. Now, just uh, the goal was to be uh, so that we can be a blessing to other churches who will be coming over as well. But um, thinking back on those times, it is a wonderful thing to see people working. Uh, you don't even have to really call a meeting for that. Everyone was just always a church. Uh, when there's a holiday, everyone's here just working towards something. Now, that is something that is good to see. Now, pangit pun tignan. It's, it's, uh, what, the opposite of that is people doing their own thing in the church. Now, I do my own thing, you do your own thing, don't mind me, I won't mind you. And then we just come together every Sunday and worship the Lord. Now, that is the opposite of having the united mind to work. Now, these people, they had the mind to work. That's why it didn't matter what the enemy said. How many of these people, these people are working around the walls. Maybe they don't even talk to each other every day. But all of them have that same mind, I'm going to continue working. They don't know if others are continuing to work, but they know that this is what I have to do. I'm going to continue working on this. Now, we should have that kind of mind. Now, God, if God has made it clear what His will is, corporately as a church, everyone has to get on working for that goal. For that, so that uh, we should pray for that and, and God, that God will give us all that kind of mind to work. And we are being encouraged even in the New Testament to have one mind, to have one goal. Everything should be, kagabi, uh, ilang beses na isigaw yan, yung one, di ba? Pati yung verse, one din. Yun yung hindi ko kaya as a pastor eh. As a pastor, as a preacher, yung sumisigaw ng ganun. Kasi masakit dito. Kaya nakahanga po yung mga pastor na kayang sumigaw na napakatagal. But, uh, yun, inemphasize sa atin, no? yung one! Yan yung kagabi. Dapat po lahat tayo isa-isa. Laa, isa-isa. <laughs> Nag nagkakaisa. Kasi yun yung opposite, yung isa-isa. No? Nagkakaisa po tayo, doing the work of God. Now, maybe today, hindi natin nakikita yun madalas. That everyone, like literally everyone doing the same work. Everyone having the same mind. Maybe because we don't have the same goal anymore. Uh, maybe not everyone has the same goal anymore. Maybe we don't have the same commitment to the work anymore. Maybe it's because the devil is working now more now more than ever. Maybe. Right? Or, may, or no matter what, is, what it is. As I study the book of Nehemiah, there's nothing. The only thing that's stopping us from having that mind to work is ourselves. Yeah. It's the only thing. Uh, kung magkaroon ka ng sarili mong agenda, then you're going to destroy that unity. Kung magkaroon ka ng sarili mong kagustuhan, and you're going to do that despite what everyone else is doing, then you're going to destroy the unity. Kaya it only takes one person to destroy the unity of the church. That's why we all have to be on guard. And that is what we're going to study today. What is the, uh, di the uh, small difference on how they responded to the new threat here in Nehemiah? Now, but let us... Uh, uh, exhaust uh, verse number six here. So they had a mind to work. Be they became like minded. All of them want to do the work. And another important uh, uh, reason why we should be busy working on the work of the Lord is because the idle mind, having nothing to do, is a uh, 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 easier target for the devil. Kung wala kang ginagawa, hindi ka busy sa gawain ng Panginoon, mas madali kang talunin ng kaaway. Remember in 2 Samuel chapter 11, verse number 1. It says here, And it came to pass, after the year was expired, at the time when kings go forth to battle. Remember, what is the time? What, what, is, uh, what time should it be? A time when kings go forth and battle. But what did David do? David sent Joab and his servants with him and all Israel, and they destroyed the children of Ammon and besieged Rabbah, but David tarried still at Jerusalem. Now this time was a time to work, a time to go to war, a time to fight for the Lord. And, and even kings are going. But instead of doing that, what did David do? 
he stayed at Jerusalem. He didn't do what he was supposed to do. He didn't become busy in the work of the Lord. Now what happened? He was an easy prey for the devil. We all know what happened. Diba? Muntik na ito, i-preach ni Brother Deo, hindi niya lang tinuloy. But he read the verse, right? We know what happened. He, was, he got tempted, he fell to, in this, in this uh, sin with Bathsheba. Why? Because he was not busy in the work of the Lord. The idle mind, we have heard this a lot, is the devil's workshop. We're not busy with the work of the Lord. Kung wala kang ginagawa, keep on thinking about the Word of God. Wala kang ginagawa, keep on reading, keep on praying. You can, it, it is really possible na patuloy tayong maging occupied sa gawain ng Panginoon. You don't have to be in church to do the work of the Lord. You, you can be at home alone and still doing the work of the Lord. You can, you can be anywhere you, uh, you, you are and still contribute to the, to the goal that the church has. Kaya nga po, patuloy natin gawin yan. Let's not be idle. The moment that you relax, the moment that you put your guard down, the moment na ayaw mo nang kumilos para sa Panginoon is the moment that the devil will start working. Kung ang jablo masipag, mas lalo dating sipagan. Now, we're not doing it again, we, and this has been reiterated to us over and over again in the past week, that we are not doing it in the, in the power of our flesh. But if we are really relying on the power of the Spirit and really following what the Spirit is telling us to do, then we are going to be busy in the work of the Lord. Minsan po, mas busy pa tayo sa ibang bagay. Right? Mas busy pa tayo sa trabaho. Pwede na sabihin, understandable naman yun, marami tayong time na nasa school kasi sa church. But no, your mind can be, still be occupied with the work of the Lord. Now, kahit nagaano tayo kabisi, marami tayong kailangan gawin, let's, no, let's still find time to patuloy tayong mag-aral ng salita ng Panginoon. Why? Because we can never really be like-minded until all of us get down into, uh, into studying the Bible. The, the, the thing that will make us like-minded is the Word of God. Right? If all of us will study, read, we're reading the same thing, we're reading the same version, hopefully, right? and we're reading uh, uh, and, and, and we're letting the Holy Spirit teach us, then the, the result will be like-mindedness and, and having that mind to work for the Lord. Kaya po patuloy po tayo mag-aral, patuloy po tayo magbasa, magpakalalim sa salita ng Panginoon. Why? Because that is the only victory we can have against the devil. That's the only victory we can have against uh, what the devil is throwing at us. Kaya nga kahit busy po, Kahit naman po lahat tayo, maraming pinagkakabisihan. May work, uh, dito, may family, may fellowship, and all of these things. Iba sa amin, nag mobile legends pa, kailangan pa ng oras dyan. Pero you know, hindi po natin dapat isang tabi yung pag-aaral ng salta pa noon para sa mga to. Si Mili, pinagsasabihan ka mo kaninang umaga. Sabi niya, alas 12 na naglalaro pa. Bakit? Kasi tinapos po muna yung pag-aaral ng salta ng Diyos. Bago ka mag-relax, bago matulog. Di po ba? Pero, I'm not saying that all of these things are bad, pero masama siya kung yun na lang ang ginawa mo. Di po ba? You, you should know your priority. And later on, we will see how Nehemiah, uh, uh, paano niyang inayos ang kanyang mga priorities. Okay? And, tawag dito, katulad ngayon, blessed kasi maulan. No, hindi kami masyadong naging busy kagabi. Pero po, talagang hindi po kami naglaro. Side note lang, kasi hinintay namin si Kuya Jun talaga. Para pagka maganda yung panahon mamaya, at least kasama namin siya sa fellowship po. Ano? So, uh, bl- blessing na no, umulan. So, uh, uh, mar- mas marami kang time sa sa bahay. Instead na magpa kung ano nung gawin mo, mag-aral tayo ng salta ng Panginoon. Why? Kung hindi po tayo pare-parehas. Kasi no matter how loud the preacher is, no matter how good the preacher is here in front, kung ikaw hindi ka rin naman nag-aaral, hindi mo rin magigets. Hindi tayo magkakaroon ng one mind even after great preaching. Even after great exposition of the Bible, it's still impossible to have that one mind. Kung umuupo ka diyan, hindi mo nagigets yung sinasabi niya. Why? Hindi mo pa kasi nabasa. Hindi mo pa kasi naisip. Hindi pa ta- hindi ka pa magwo-work ang Holy Spirit sa iyo. Hindi naman magic 'yan, mga kapatid eh. Hindi naman 'yan na uh, parang yung mga uh, yung sinasabi nga kahapon mga Pentecostal na Holy Spirit lang lahat kahit hindi ako nag-aral, pagtayo ko dito, I will preach great. Hindi ganoon eh. Ibibigay sa iyo ng Holy Spirit kung ano yung pinag-aralan mo, kung ano yung uh, uh, binasa mo sa Bible, that is the way it works. So now, hindi ka nagbabasa, hindi ka nag-aaral, anong gagamitin ng Holy Spirit sa atin? Right? That's why we all, we all need to have that. And we should learn from these people, having the mind to work and, 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 and being like-minded. Now, let's go to verse number 7 and 8. It says here, but it came to pass. Now, they build the wall, uh, 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 they keep on working. It came to pass that when Sanballat and Tobiah and the Arabians and the Ammonites and the Ashdodites heard that the walls of Jerusalem were made up and that the breaches began to be stopped. Then they were very wroth. Verse 8, And conspired all of them together to come 
and to fight Jeru against Jerusalem and to hinder it. Now, first thing that I want to see here is, and we already touched this a while ago, is Nehemiah knows his priority and he has a very effective plan. The, the, the verse says here that, uh, that the walls were made up and that the breaches began to be stopped. Now, no, Nehemiah knows that the priority was the wall. So that is what he kept on preaching to the people. Build the wall, build the wall, don't mind them. And it says here that the breaches were, began to be stopped. Now, remember before Nehemiah, when Nehemiah came to Jerusalem, he didn't immediately announce what he's going to do. He spent days walking around secretly looking at which, uh, ano ba talaga ang problema? Which places should we prioritize na gawin? Di ba, may mga butas, yung wall, ano yung uunahin natin dapat gawin? Now, Nehemiah knew that we have to uh, 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 close these breaches first. Alam Saraduhan muna natin. Make sure that we have the right foundation first. Now, um, by doing this, they were able to build the wall to, uh, uh, sa kalahate. Kumalahate agad sila. By doing that and having a clear and effective plan. Kasi kung sinabi lang ni Hemaya na, let's go on working, kanya-kanya na tayo, wala din. Di ba, inasayin niya pa saan ito, sa uh, uh, anong, saan, uh, the, 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 no, chapter 2, sinabi pa kung saan gate nag-work, yung iba sa kanilang mga bahay, yung iba kung saan saan. And Nehemiah, I believe, even told them what to do first. Now, he knows his priority and he has an effective plan. Why? He had a lot of time to plan before this. Now, remember in the palace, when he prayed, he began praying, he started planning. He's a man who plans. He doesn't only pray. While he's praying and waiting, he lets God do the plan in his mind. Now, he, he arrived at Jerusalem, he walked around, he, see, he saw the problem, and he knows exactly what, he's, he, what they are supposed to do. Now, yan pong, uh, minsan po tayo, when, when, we, when we know the will of God, when, we, when the Lord uh, uh, makes clear uh, what He wants us to do, minsan, hindi na po tayo mag -isip -isip, magpaplano, basta gawa na lang. And maybe, while we're doing that, having the right thing in mind, having the right motive, we do it the wrong way. Kung hindi po tayo nagplano ng maayos, kung hindi po natin uh, inayos yung, yung, yung plano natin o yung ating gagawin according to the Word of God. Kaya nga po, pwede maging effective but it, should, it will not be as effective as the, Lord, as the Lord wants us to do it. Now, if all of these people did what they think they just have to do on their own, na walang leadership ni Nehemiah, wala silang goal in mind, anong uunahin, I believe maybe they will still be able to build the wall pero baka mas matagal o baka mas ma, uh, ma hindi effective, hindi mas maganda ang kanilang pagbibuild. Now, it can be applied in our time. Why? Because all of us, lahat naman ng simbahan, iisa ang goal. But we see that the, the goal is to glorify the Lord and get people saved. But we see that iba-iba ang pamamaraan na ginagawa. And sometimes, those ways, and we also talked about yesterday's, yesterday, those ways ay hindi according sa salita ng Panginoon. Like, ang goal is to have a big ministry, to have more people coming to church. So, they, they, they make up this soul-winning plan. Now, maybe, and I believe that God uses that to save people as well. May mga naliligtas din. Kasi may mga pastors na effective, great pastors ngayon na they were led uh, through with the sinner's prayer. Now, may mga naliligtas din. But, maybe, mas magiging effective yung effort nila kung tinama nila sa salita ng Panginoon talaga. Kung talagang ginawa nila kung ano yung sinasabi ng Bible. Now, even the wrong methods, maybe God can use that for His glory, but it will not be as effective. Hindi, kaya nga po maganda, before we even do something, we plan. We look at the Word of God and see how God wants us to do it. Hindi lang po importante kung ano yung gusto. Uh, it's not, uh, hindi lang po yung what God wants us to do. And equally important is how we, He wants us to do it. Amen. It's equal, that is equally important because uh, even if we reach the goal, if we did it in the wrong way, God will not be pleased with that. Because if God gave you the goal, He will also supply you the how to do it. As long as we are prayerful asking Him uh, uh, to, to, to guide us, to, to give us wisdom. Kaya nga po Nehemiah here, they closed the breaches first and then they built the wall to, have, uh, to the half thereof. And sabi pa dito, that when these people heard it, they were very wroth. Now remember in the first uh, verse, I believe, of this chapter, that Sanbalat, si Sanbalat pa lang, he was wroth. Right? But because he saw that people are starting to do something. So he got angry. Now, when they saw that the wall was made up to the half thereof, they were very angry. They were very wroth. And hindi na lang si Sanbalat to, marami na sila lalo ngayon. Lahat sila ngayon ay galit na. 
Now, uh, what, what, we can see, what we can see here is the anger of the enemies when the work is being done. Right? Lalo po magagalit ang kaaway pag effectively natin ginagawa ang gawain ng Panginoon. Hindi po tayo papakilang man ng kaaway kung wala tayo na-achieve. Right? The, it, it, if, the devil, if the devil doesn't see that we are hindering his plans, he will not even mind this work. He doesn't care about this work, right? The word wrath, very wrath is an intense word, means to be hot, to burn, to be furious. Okay? Remember, hindi na lang po ito si Sanbalat. Marami na siyang nadamay sa kanilang galit. Now, now we can, uh, now, now, tawag dito, kaya nga po, yung pag-aaral namin kaninang umaga sa aming sun, uh, Sunday school Bible class is the reason why God told us ang command sa atin ng Panginoon in Matthew chapter 5 is when people are reviling us, persecuting us is to what? Rejoice and be exceedingly glad. Why? Dahil alam natin, the reason why they're doing this is because we're being effective in the work of the Lord. Kung hindi po tayo effective, wala rin pong opposition. Magkakaroon lang po ng opposition. Why? Because we're actually achieving something. Now, these people, they saw, at the beginning, nakita nila, they're starting to come together and starting to work. Now, it bothered the enemy. So they ridiculed them, intimidated them. But now, the, they saw that they're actually doing something. Na talagang maangat na yung wall, they got angry. And then they, they even uh, upgraded their plan from intimidation to ridicule to threat of their lives. Napapatayin na sila. Now, the, what, that is one gauge na may, malalaman natin kung gaano ka-effective ang ginagawa natin. Kung merong kumokontra. Kung ang kaaway ay kumokontra. Kung hindi tayo kinokontra, I believe we should rethink what we're doing. Uh, kung kung bang, para bang man tayo pinapasin ng kaaway, siguro wala lang. Para sa basketball yan, kung yung tao hindi walang shooting, ba't mo babantayan sa three points? Sayang lang naman yung, yung pagod mo. Kung kanyara, binabantayan ko si Sed, sa ilalim na ako agad. Bayaan ko na lang muna siya doon. Kasi kahit tumira siya, hindi ma-shoot. Di ba? Parang example lang naman. Example lang. Ganun po yun. So para bang nakita ng Diablo, wala naman nagagawa to, why should, why should I hinder these people? Why should I even, uh, bakit naman kailangan uh, pang bigat effort na pigilan itong mga to? Actually, sometimes, pag hindi tayo kinakaway, maybe we're even aiding his goal. Di ba? Katulad ng easy believism. Easy believism pushes people nearer to hell. Why? Because they make people believe in their mind that they're saved when they're actually not. Napakahirap lalo silang witnessan. Right? Mas, mad mas madali pang witnessan yung tao na he doesn't believe that he's saved and he knows that he's a bad person going to hell he, uh, and, and, and show him the gospel. But yung tao na sa tingin niya, I already prayed a prayer, I'm saved, someone already gave me assurance that I'm saved, napakahirap paliwanagan. Yeah. Diba? Pakatok ka pa lang, ay, nakausap na ako. Nagpray na ako. Ah, okay na yan, na ano na ako, na, na sabihan na ako nung kasama mo dyan. ba? Hindi mo na masishiran. Close na agad ang mind nila kasi sa kanila, okay na, save na ako, langit na ako. ba? That's why you see believism. Even though some people may get saved through that kind of program, pero mas, malay, mas marami po tayong natutulak palapit sa impyerno. That's why, siguro, lalong hindi ka kukontrahin ng job, he's doing my job for me. Diba? But if you are preaching the correct gospel, the right message of the gospel, and people starts to get saved, lalo ka niyang kukontrahin. Doon siya kukontra. Why? Because you're actually stealing people from him. Stealing people uh, uh, and, and putting a dent on his plan. Kaya nga po mga kapatid, huwag po tayong uh, 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 tawag dito, ma lungkot pag maraming kumuk pag kumukontra ang kaaway sa atin. Huwag po tayong ma mabahala. Why? Because we know first we're doing the right thing, we're doing it effectively, and that's why the devil is not agreeing with us. Kaya nga po pagka ang church natin, maraming nasasabing maganda ang mundo tukol sa atin, ang mga wicked people, parang ang pangit naman nun. Kaya nga kabahan ka, kunyari si mayor, si governor, ah, na napupurihin yung simbahan natin, Okay, o kaya yung mga tao na alam mong mali ang ginagawa pero pupurihin ang iyong ginag ang, 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 ang anak ng Panginoon, there's something wrong. That means nakaakbay sa iyo yung kaaway. Agreeing agree siya sa iyo. Now, balik tayo natin. If the devil should not agree with righteousness or if uh, uh, wicked people are not agreeing with what we're doing, then the church in return should also not agree with the ways of the world. Hindi rin dapat natin tayo sumasali doon. Okay? 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 16 to 18. Sabi dito, And what agreement had the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God had said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. And the command is, Wherefore, come out from among them, 
and be you separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and, I, and will be a father unto you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. We already heard preachings about this, and rightly so, sa mga preaching na narinig natin, they are uh, commanding us not to be unequally, individually, and equally yoked together with unbelievers, to get married to them, to be in partnership with them. But, ang main context po nito, ang application nito is to the church. Remember, 2 Corinthians is being written to the whole church. So Paul is telling them that do not be unequally yoked as a church together with the things of this world. That is the, the main application of this. That is the main context of this. Sila sabi niya, bilang simbahan, hindi tayo dapat sumasali sa ganun. Bilang simbahan, dapat tayo yung kumukontra sa ways of this world. Tayo yung mga, uh, para bang kontrabida sa harapan ng mga tao. Why? Because we don't agree with that. Diba? Kaya nga, as much as possible, if we have the chance to be heard, we will be. We should be heard. We should uh, speak against these things that are happening in this world. Why? Because that is what we're called to do. Hindi naman po tayo nandito para lang manahimik and mind our own business. We are here to go against the ways of the devil. Kaya nga, sabi, na, sabi, na, uh, sabi na, 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 ni Christ that the gates of hell shall not prevail. Why? Because it's the, it's, it's the church who should be attacking the gates of hell. Hindi lang po tayo nag-sit dito and just protect the four corners our church we should be on the offensive we should be people who are who dapat alam na mga tao ng simbahan natin we don't agree with this we don't agree with that why because it's against the word of god kaya nga po kung sila hindi agree sa atin we should also make it clear we don't agree with what they're doing we don't agree with them bilang simbahan da, dapat po maliwanag yan sa mundo nakikita nila na tayo ay mga tao na kontra sa 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 sa, sa norm nitong mundo na ito no, separation is a very is a topic that is very much neglected sa panahon natin. Kasi ang sikat po ngayon is fellowship and friendship. Yan ang sikat. Uh, nag, tawag dito, nakarinig na ako ng preaching na ganito sa Pilipinas. Ang importante sa isang pastor ay magkaroon ng mga kaibigan. Yun daw, yun daw ang importante. Dapat meron silang brotherhood. Na meron silang closeness. Okay naman po yun eh. Lalo na kung like-minded yung mga kaibigan mo, lalo kang i-encourage sa gawain ng Panginoon. But, kung nakakompromise ang salita ng Panginoon because of friendship, saan doon ang mas matimbang sa'yo? Kaya nga po, we should be able to learn the, 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 uh, how to properly apply biblical separation. Ngayon, kasi sa mind po natin, and I believe na naramdaman na natin ito, it's a sad life to live. Now, it's sad to lose friends, but as a personal testimony, and I know nakita nyo na po ito, yes, you will lose some friends, but in return, the Lord will lead you to the right kind of friends. And mas lalo yung saya na ibibigay sa'yo na meron kang tamang kaibigan. Why? Kasi mag-grieve ka if meron kang kaibigan na mahal mo nga, close ka nga, but you know what they're doing is wrong. Lagi, lalo ka lang nag-grieve. Kung ayaw mo silang i-rebuke, kailangan mo pigilan yung sarili mo. I-rebuke mo sila, mawawala sila as your friend. Pero kung magkaroon ka ng kaibigan na God led you to people who are right with Him, who knows the Word of God, who will encourage you to get closer to the Lord, that will bring you so much more joy than sa mga, uh, uh, sa mga kaibigan na nawala sa'yo. And that is a testimony even of this church. Now, the Lord has led us to people who will encourage us to be deeper in the Word of God. Has led us to people who, who challenge us not na to rethink what we're doing and, and really test everything against the Word of God. And if we see that it's wrong, be humble enough to correct our ways. Now, without first deciding to separate from these people, the Lord will not lead us to the correct kind of people. Kaya nga po, however hard it is, we should... B- biblically separate with these people. Kaya nga po, may kita yan kahit sa malilit na bagay. Pag makita mo sa nagkakaroon ng mga pastor dito na dumating, nag-preach sa atin, naging blessing, naging, nagkaroon tayo ng fellowship with them and all of these things. But sadly, makita mo naman sa Facebook, ba, fellowship pala sila sa lahat. Kahit nasa pastor na ganito, ganyan, okay pa rin sila. Now, by, by the grace of God, in, in, para sa akin, now I start to keep my distance away from them. Na, hindi, ko, hindi ka na mag-agree sa kanila sinasabi or whatever. Maybe it doesn't matter to them because I'm just one person, right? But it matters to God if I'm obeying Him or not. Right? So, uh, para bang makita ko, now, the Lord commanded us to separate against those people. They don't, we don't have to treat them as enemies. Right? We just don't have to be always be affiliated with them. Why? Because it is the command of God to separate from them even though they are within our ranks. Yan po ang napakahirap. Misa, kaparehas natin, Baptist, kailangan malayuan. Pwede sabihin, eh, di, bakit na testimony sa mga unbeliever, tayo-tayo nagko-contra. Pero, importante po ba yung sasabihin nila o importante yung sabi ng, ng salita ng Panginoon? 
na da, mas dapat po ma, doon yan matetest kung ano yung mas mabigat sa'yo. Now, the Bible says to rejoice when this is happening. To rejoice and be exceeding glad. For so, why? First, nakita, nakita nga natin na, na, na because we are doing something right. And sabi ng uh, Matthew 5.12, kanina nabasa namin ito sa Bible class, For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Why should you rejoice? Because you're in good company. Right? Because that also happened to them. Why? Because they were doing right. Because now you're doing right, it's happening to you. It happened to Christ Himself. Now, the Bible says that you are not more than your master. Now, if the, the world will do this to us, then we should rejoice and praise the Lord. Now, not only... What's that? Now, let, let, let's be a bit, a bit quicker here. Not only that, uh, they, 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 they are mad because work is being done. Okay? Kukontrahin lang tayo kung talaga meron tayo nagagawa. But we notice in these verses that the enemies are also multiplied. In verse 1, isa lang. Si Sanbalat lang. Verse 2 or 3, sinama niya si Tobiah. And now, ilan na sila? Sabi dito, sa verse number 7, um, uh, Nehemiah 4, 7, But it came to pass that when Sanbalat and Tobiah, sumama na ang mga Arabians and the Ammonites and the Ashdodites heard that the walls of Jerusalem were made up and that the breaches began to be, uh, to be stopped, then they were very wrath. Now, the enemies are being multiplied. Now, I looked at, uh, I, I downloaded a picture. Tignan po natin. Now, it says here, nasa na yung mga enemies? Sabi dito, Sanbalat. No, Sanbalat is from Samaria, we know that. So that is at the north part. Yung blue, yung, yung Jerusalem. Yan. Ano tayo nasa school? Jerusalem. Now, Sanbalat is here. Okay? And the next one will be the Ammonites. Okay? Which is uh, over there, sa east. And the Ashdodites, and then and then also the uh, Arabians, which is Idumea, dun sa 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 tag dito sa south side. Now, makita natin first si ano lang si San Barat lang sa taas. Now they are surrounded by the enemies. Okay, lahat ng side enemies are starting to gather and to plan to kill them. Now, maybe when we are working for the Lord, when we have one mind. We have one goal, and we all get down to working. If it's God's will, it will be known throughout the world. Kahit na konti lang, it doesn't matter kung ilan kayo, as long as you're united. If it is the will of God, it will be known throughout the world. And then, you will have more people uh, that is hindering you. Anong, anong purpose pa nun? Maybe, para, makita, para lalo natin makita na hindi yung numbers natin. Why? Because mas maraming kaaway kaysa sa atin. Okay? Lalo, lalo, lalo natin makita, lalo, na, lalo natin mapunta sa perspective na, okay, naging united na kami, may nagagawa kami. Because the danger in that is, magsisimula tayo magtiwala sa unity natin. Unity is the result of trusting God. Amen. But if we start putting our trust in unity, our unity instead of God, then that's when we defeat the purpose. So maybe when we start working, the Lord now is starting to show Nehemiah, okay, you're working, Medyo madami kayo and, and you're, you're starting to do something but remember, mas marami pa rin kaaway. You still have to rely on me. Palagi pa rin. That's why, uh, mapansin po natin in the Bible, it's never the majority who's doing the right thing. It's always the minority and God always makes sure to let them know that there are so many enemies rely on me. There's a lot of them. Kahit na united kayo, dumadami kayo, mas marami pa rin kaaway. And you're still the minority. And you still have to re rely on my power. You still have to rely on me. The purpose of God is so that we learn that nobody will glory in himself. Yeah. Nobody will take the glory. Even if, if we win and we praise because we're united, because we're working together, it defeats the whole purpose. Why? Because we saw ourselves instead of the power of God. Because we saw our work instead of the power of God. Now, God lets us always, lagi, na, lagi niya pinapaalala sa atin, marami kayong kaaway. Marami kayong kaaway. Kahit na lahat kayo sa church magkaisa, mas marami pa rin sila. We still have to rely on the Lord so that we will not trust in our own might. We will not trust in our own work. We will not, you should not even trust in our church. Always just put our trust in God. Do not trust on the leader. Do not trust on the, on the preachers. Do not put our trust on our work. Do not put our trust on the things that we have been doing. Always put the trust on God. Don't tayo sidetrack. Now, God is showing them. Now, there are many. Hindi lang yan si Sanbalat, nagtagumpay kayo, okay? Hindi lang si Tobaya, nagtagumpay kayo, okay? Pero, 
Lahat yan. Now, God made this thing known to these people so that their natural reaction is to attack Jerusalem. Why? Because they know what these people are capable of. They know what their God is capable of. And if they're able to rebuild the city, who knows what, what, what their God can do next. Kaya nga, ang gagawin nila, they, they are, tawag dito, they will uh, 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 escalate their plan. Okay, that, that will be our, uh, maybe our last point uh, later. But going back to this, we're always the minority. Palagi pong mas marami ang kaaway. That's why, kaya nga po, individually, as we apply this, when we make decisions or we do something, hindi dapat natin hayaan na yung majority ang mag-dictate ng ating decision. Okay? And now, of course, I know, uh, lagi natin put into that perspective. Because if we let what people are saying around us dictate what we're going to do, then we set ourselves up for a fall. Now, dapat ang ating decision as a church and our direction as a church must be dictated by the Holy Spirit and the Word of God. Right? Hindi po kung yung sinasabi ng iba. Kunyari, ito yung binigay ng Panginoon, but everyone else is saying, ah, uh, dial it down, people. M- masyado na kayong ganito, masyado na kayong ganyan. Now, because everyone is saying that, babaguhin natin ang plano natin. No. They're not the ones who put us in this path in the first place. It is the Holy Spirit, is God. So, patuloy natin yung nasusundin natin. Hindi yung boses ng karamihan. Now, we see that their plan was not just to intimidate again or to ridicule again. Their plan, uh, the by- verse 8 says, or 9, Eight, and conspired all of them together to come and to fight against Jerusalem and to hinder it. Okay? Hindi lang basta tara. Sabi, hindi lang basta sinabi ni San Balat, Oy, tulungan nyo naman akong asarin itong mga to. Hindi. Lahat sila are coming together all around Jerusalem to fight. Now, there's a threat now sa kanilang buhay. Threat in their way of living. Threat sa kanilang family. Threat sa kanila mismo. Now, what intimidation and ridicule cannot do, threat of physical harm will do it. Meron po sa atin, hindi tayo affected sa intimidation, sa ridicule, pero pag apektado na, damay na ang pamilya, magbabago na. Damay na yung ating buhay, way of life, pwede na magbago ang decision natin. Damay na yung ating comfort, pwede na magbago ang ating decision sa, sa kalooban ng Panginoon. Now, it doesn't matter what their plan is. Kahit na planuhin pa nilang patayin ang mga to, they will not change the plan. They will not change the goal. They will not, uh, the, hindi sila magbabago. Why? Just, just because circumstances change, doesn't mean that the will of God for them change as well. Hindi ba po, ipapatayin na sila, titigil na silang mag-build ng wall? No. Oh, lalo pa nga nila dapat i-build yung wall. Right? Hindi, kaya nga po, yung, even the plan is escalating. It's starting from one person to many, starting from ridicule to now people try, uh, are planning to kill them. They, what they did was this, exactly the same thing. To pray and to continue doing the work. Kaya nga po ganun din dapat now. If, even if, and, and I know that maybe uh, uh, someday makakaroon din kayo, kayo tayo ng experience na ang ating way of life will be changed, affected. Hindi po dapat yun ang uh, uh, reason para tayo tumigil. Okay, that is not the reason. If, if, if anything else, that should challenge us to, eat, to, to follow the Lord even more. And bakit rin po natin dito that all these countries, these people, they are not even in agreement with each other. Hindi sila mga uh, uh, no, natural na mga talagang allies. Even, they even go to war sometimes sila sila rin. But when it comes to the work of God, yung mga yan, magkakampi-kampi para lang mahinder. Diba? Ma- mapapasin po natin yan. Kahit na sila mismo may difference, pero dahil ang common enemy nila, ang katotohanan, lahat sila, kakalimutan nila ang difference nila para lang mahinder ang, ta- ang, 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 ang work ng Panginoon. Now, they are coming all together to hinder the work of the Lord. Now, I think, yan po ang uh, pwede nating tawag dito, uh, uh, this is exactly what ecumeni- ecumenism is all about. Na kalimutan natin yung difference natin. Why? Because we even we have the common goal anyway. Diba? Catholic ka, Muslim ka, okay lang yan. Let's worship together because our goal is to have a peaceful world. Diba? That is the thinking of the world. Hindi po dapat yan. The Bible is clear. Separate. Hindi sila agree sa Bible. Separate. Hindi sila agree sa, sa kalooban ng Panginoon. Separate from them. Hindi po tayo kailangan mag-compromise in order to achieve the goal. That is not the correct way. Kaya ka po nakakalungkot ngayon, ang daming mega churches sa Pilipinas, even Baptist mega churches who have fundamental differences. Pero they are now uh, being uh, in agreement with each other. 
right? Uh, uh, one, one big church, katulad ng Bethany, this is a mission-hearted church led by their pastor to help missions. That is their goal, to help missions and to spread the, the gospel all around the world. But they are in good fellowship with another one in Santa Ana, mega church in Santa Ana, whose goal and agenda is to love the pastor by the leadership of their pastor, uh, to love himself. And, and yung, yung ang kanilang goal. That is a very fundamental difference. Now, you hear the stories. Yung pastor sa isa, binigyan na magandang sasakyan, binenta para sa mission. Yung pastor sa isa, kukunin yung pera sa mission para magkaroon na magandang sasakyan. ba? Fundamental difference. But why? Kailangan nilang mag Why? Kasi sila yung malalaking church. Kailangan meron silang common goal. You can still achieve your goal without agreeing with people. You don't have to agree with them to achieve your goal. God is already using one church mightily for the gospel. They don't, have, they don't need the help of people who are compromisers. Kaya nga po, we need to draw that line. Katulad ng yung church sa Tatalon, hindi, they don't know the line anymore. Right? They, they, they already agree with Pentecostals, with Charismatics. Diba? Dati, mga Baptist lang naliko. Magsisimula lang naman dun yan eh. Hindi ka naman asta, basta agad makikipag-fellowship sa Pentecostal. Magsimula ka muna sa Baptist na medyo konting, uh, medyo Calvinistic. Okay lang naman. Medyo malapit pa rin. Tapos, makikipag-fellowship ka na sa mga talagang matinding Calvinist. Okay lang naman. O, Baptist pa rin. Tapos, makikipag-fellowship ka na dun sa mga Bapticostal. Okay naman, may Baptist pa rin. Hanggang, ano na, nakita mo na ngayon, wala na, hindi na sila Baptist. And I believe, only time will come na tatanggalin na yung pangalan ng Baptist sa kanila. Why? Because Baptist, the word Baptist divides. Uh, it discriminates and all of these things. Kaya dapat tanggalin. We all have to be together and loving each other. Right? But, but you don't have to compromise to achieve the goal. Right? They don't have to do it. But that is the way of the devil. That is the way of the world. They can easily compromise to destroy the work of God. But we should not do the same thing. Now that is their escalating plan. Hindi lang sila basta nagre-ridicule. Papatay na sila. Pap papatay na sila. They're going to war against them. And their purpose, again, is the same thing. To hinder the work. It's the same purpose. Different method, different plan, same purpose. To hinder the work. Kaya, papaano sila magtatagumpay? Pag tumigil yung mga gumagawa. That is the only way. Kaya nga po, makita rin natin dito, they had a different plan, they escalated their plan. Now, Nehemiah had a little bit different response. Verse number 9. Nevertheless, as his manner was, we made our prayer unto God. Never changed. Right? The ridiculed response is prayer. The intimidated, the response is prayer. They uh, are threatening their lives. What is the response? Doesn't have to change. Still have to pray first to the Lord. As wisdom, but prayed to God and what? Set a watch against them day and night. Kasi common sense lang. Diba? The, the whole point of this uh, study is to not, is not to get you guys to just pray. Diba? Because uh, as we pray, the Lord will guide us to what, on what to do. Even if the Lord's guidance is don't do anything yet, at least that is from the Lord. Pero hindi yung default na pray lang, tas tapos na. Okay? Kasi may, mayroon po tayong ganong klaseng thinking. No, it's just, minsan kailangan din natin ng common sense. Diba? You're worried about your security at home, pray, and then lock the door. Diba? Uh, you want to have a job, pray, and go apply for a job. You want to pass your exam, you pray, and then review. Right? Kung pray ka lang ng pray, wala rin po mangyayari. Now, when God guides you, He gives wisdom on what to do, start, on do, start doing it. Now, this time they prayed. Now they know what to do. Start, they started to what they call this, set a watch. Why? Kasi hindi lang basta salita ang ginagbigay na ng kalaban. Papatay na sila. Alam nga namang baliwalain lang nila yun. I let the Lord fight for us. Of course the Lord will fight for them, but they also need their own weapons. Right? How can, hindi, lang, hindi naman yan uh, magic na magpakikidlatan na lang lahat ng Panginoon, tapos patay na, and then walang mangyayari sa kanila, build lang sila ng build. Now, they have to do it. Now, upon, now he, he, this is, a, again, a theme in the life of Nehemiah. Where in, in chapter 1, he prayed and planned. Uh, in chapter 2, he played, and uh, in, in other chapters, he prayed, and then he surveyed. In chapter, in this chapter, in the, the beginning of this chapter, he prayed and then he encouraged the people. Now, he prayed and he's now encouraging the people to defend themselves. Get ready. 
Why? Because we are about to be attacked by the enemy. Get ready because we are, this, this, this is about to happen. But notice, they did not stop working. Kahit na may nagbag, meron ng konting tweak. Meron silang dinagdag sa plano. It's still the main, jo- main, main, main goal was to work. Hindi natin titigilan to. We can still keep on working, still keep on building the walls. But at the same time, be alert. Be sober. Be vigilant. Why? Ito na yung kaaway. And this is a theme throughout the Bible. The Lord Jesus Christ in the end of His ministry said this. Matthew 26 verse 40 and 41. And He cometh unto His disciples and findeth them asleep and said unto Peter, What could, what could ye not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray. To pray and be watchful. To pray and be sober. That ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Why did God... Why did God tell this to them? Why? Because it's easier to sleep than to pray. It's easier for your mind to wander than to keep your mind on the things of God. Kaya nga po yung mga bagay na it needs effort. Kung hindi ka mag effort ang automatic ng, 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 ng mind natin is to wander around. Not to be watchful. That's why you have to give effort to be watchful. And not to sleep. Wag tayong, wag tayong mag-relax. Wag natin, wag natin let our guard down. Just, just thinking na okay na lahat, maayos na, and then we let our guard down. That's not the way. We should be watching and praying. Uh, Paul, uh, during the uh, end of his ministry as well, uh, actually, Acts chapter 20, verse 31. We studied this last week. Therefore, watch and remember, by the space of tears, I cease not to warn everyone night and day with tears. And the Bible is full of commands for us to be watching. Okay, to be watching for the devil. Ephesians 6, 18. Praying always with all prayer, prayer and supplication in the Spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Now, as Paul has watched out for them, we've studied this, now it's their time to watch out for the flock. And at the same time, the flock should watch out for themselves as well. Kaya nga po, hindi lang basta pray, to be able to be watching as well. To, to, to see when the devil is coming, where he's coming from, and prepare ourselves for battle. Even Peter said this, 1 Peter 5.8, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he, he may devour. The word vigilant means to watch, to give strict attention, to be cautious. Kaya nga po mga kapatid, it is a command of the Bible not only to pray for wisdom, not only to pray for guidance, not only to pray for protection, but actually do something about it. You're praying for wisdom, read the Word of God. You're praying for protection, be watchful. Because, kay, kay, bakit po? Kasi every time sa Bible, whenever we're being uh, commanded to watch, it's because people are coming out to get us. Now, sa Nehemiah, they're coming out to uh, stop the work. Pero sa ating panahon ngayon, ang tactic po ng Jablo, hindi naman dumating sa church at patayin tayo. Eh. It's to come to the church and to cause confusion one false doctrine at a time. That is their uh, tactic. Unti-unti. Wala pong papasok dyan na may armalite, papatayin tayong lahat. Pero may papasok dyan na mukhang mabait, naka long sleeve, naka necktie. Kami lang ata ni Sedyon ngayon. Pero slowly creep into churches and confuse churches one false doctrine at a time. That's why we have to be prayerful. That's why you have to be watchful. Why? Kasi hindi sila obvious. We have to be prayerful and watchful so that God will help us to unmask them and to know where they're coming from. Kasi ang mahirap is if you get blindsided. Right? Kung wala tayong discernment, wala tayong prayer, wala tayong watching, and maybe uh, the devil will become so successful that we trust a person that he planted in the church. We trust them to stand behind our pulpits. We trust them to teach false doctrine and believe what they're teaching. And then that's when we get blindsided and this, the church will be destroyed. Kaya nga po kailangan tayo to be watchful. Even ourselves, we also have to be watchful. 1 Corinthians 10, 12 says, Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth, what? Take heed, lest he fall. To be watchful, to be sober, to be vigilant. Why? Because hindi lang po ridic- the devil will not stop at ridicule. The devil will not stop at intimidation. The devil will do everything for us to stop working. The devil will do everything for us to be hindered doing the will of God. That's why we have to be watchful. Ingat po. Maybe the devil will use the music you listen to. Maybe the devil will use the kind of movies you watch. Right? Maybe the devil will use all of the books you read. Minsan po, para sa atin, these are harmless, but they're shaping the way we think. 
If we're not careful, they're shaping the way we decide. Right? That's why uh, it is a common thing na ang tao na mahilig sa uh, heavy rock pwede maging napaka-emotion, uh, napaka- uh, 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 reserved or violent. Right? Because all of these things na pupunta yan sa mind mo and that's what will you you will default to when it comes to I'm not saying na wag na tayong manood, wag na tayong mag, uh, all of these things, but we need to be watchful even as we do that. Right? Kunya, katulad ngayon, yung, uh, yung magiging uh, Frozen, na uh, new movie na Frozen, si Elsa, si Elsa ba? Basta yung princess. Magka, maglilitaw na magiging tomboy siya. Magkakaroon ng girlfriend. Uh, maybe, maybe uh, yun yung, uh, uh, yun yung uh, uh, balita. Maybe, para sa atin, it's uh, uh, harmless. Panood natin sa mga anak natin. Let it go, let it go. Ang cute, di ba? Nagawa sila. Pero, in their mind, growing up, okay lang yung babae tsaka babae. Di ba? The devil is really, really, ma, ano yan eh, resourceful siya. He's subtle. Kaya niyang gamitin niyan. He starts working on our children at a very young age. Kaya bilang magulang, start working on your children as well. Right? Kaya nga po, kahit ikaw, mamaya niyan, pinanood mo sa anak mo, pinapanood mo rin, tapos, oh nga, parang okay din. Ang cute naman ng babae at saka babae, di ba? Pare sila nakadress pagkakasal. Di ba? Pwede rin, unti-unti, the devil will change our way of thinking. Even the music that we listen to, kaya po, ingat tayo. Kaya nga, ang, ang mahilig tayo sa uh, uh, worldly music, every day we listen to it, maging emotional. Di ba? Hindi na tayo truth-based. Emotion-based na tayo. Di ba? Nasaan ka na? Diba? Lahat na lang iniyakan mo. Lahat na lang kinalungkutan mo. Hopelessly, hopelessly romantic ka na. Pinapanood mo ng mga Korean novela. Be watchful. Why? Ay, mga, ano po pala, novela in general. Hindi lang Korea. Ano po? Be watchful. Because that is what the devil is doing. Kaya nga po, uh, as, as, the, as the tactics of the devil is upgraded, mag-upgrade din naman tayo bilang mga Kristiyano. Lumalim din naman tayo. As the devil keeps attacking us, keep being deeper in the Word of God. As the devil is attacking us, keep being more united. Keep on working and not be sidetracked by all this. Now, the challenge this morning as we end, as we are working, we need to be prayerful and watchful. And what we need to, uh, what we need to realize also is while Nehemiah is doing all these things, one thing that they never stopped doing is to work. That is one thing that they never stopped doing. They pray and work we watch and work all of these things but everything they are they continue on working kaya po wag din po tayong tumigil do not be stopped uh, do not be uh, 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 discouraged and do not be disheartened that even as the devil uh, 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 even uh, threats our way of life and our comfort we should keep on working and keep on trusting on the lord and even though makita natin na ang konti pala natin dami pala nila still you and uh, us and God is still a majority and God can still work work with us people who are ready to be used of God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, uh, we thank you for this uh, time of uh, Sunday school. I hope that... Uh,